You see, street foods are foods which are sold in open public places. So the problem is that they get all the dust, the filth that is flying all over, number one. Number two, next one please, you can go on. That their cost has to be very low because the common man wants to eat it. So it has to be low cost, it's sold in open environment. And therefore, the vendors have to manage with these two very critical things. One, and both if you think one is environment, one is economy. So these two are very, very important when you think of the street food sector. What happens is when you go along, street food is getting popular, you can go on, I'll not follow it. Street foods are getting popular day by day. You know all the reasons, I'm sure all of you know, that because of people are migrating to towns. People from villages migrating to towns and they have to come and eat somewhere where the food is cheap. And if you think of street food, I'll come on later on, you find street foods are extremely nutritious. It's not that they are not nutrition. You will see our first study showed that how cheap and the nutrition that you get from street foods. So people depend on street foods. Secondly, they're tasty, they have variety, they're easily accessible. So in every posit positive thing that you think of food is there in street foods. It's, you cannot, uh, I mean, I will say that during my first study, we found that the most popular food in the, in the town of Bardwan, in, after, uh, no, not the first and second or third study, the most popular food in Bardwan, street food. Can you imagine what that was? That was chow mein. So in Bardwan, you found chow mein was the most popular street food. And you know the reason is what? Because in our generation, we thought Chinese food was for the, was for the rich people. People who could afford to go to Chinese restaurants, pay a lot, could have chow mein. But when the street food vendors started making chow mein, the common man felt that we are nutritionally at par. What a rich man can buy in a restaurant, I can buy the same thing from a street food vendor. I think that, you know, that it actually, that's why I want to eat socially, it cuts across classes. What you can get at a very high cost, the same thing you get at the lowest cost with a street food vendor. So it's also the socially, ethically, very equitable. Street food smoothens out the rich and the poor. So it's nutritionally smoothening out, socially acceptable, very cheap and highly nutritious. We have a lot of problems with street foods. If you can look at it, I'm not going into it. Depends on, and secondly, street food vendors don't need any prior training for coming into buying, for selling street foods. So people, Bikar, Boli, Amra, Jadir, people have no work to do, have to support a family. They don't have anything. So with a startup money of 150, 200 rupees, they can start, they can start a business. They can support their family. People come and eat. So because day by day, the necessity on food, street foods is going to increase. It's not going to decrease. So people can make a living, a, a, a living with which they can live a life. So therefore, street food dependency has increased. But along with that, problems have also increased. And if you look into the problems, I'm not going to too much of it. Nutritionally, it is extremely good, very balanced. I'll show you a chart with the done on nutrition and balanced food, very balanced. The entire problem of street food management, the management students, comes environment linked. They are often, we will just do a show you the latest study that we have done, that the main problems are they are not clean, they are not hygienic, because the vendors have no training. It's, I, mean, I, don't, I don't blame them. They have, they, don't, they have no hygiene sense. They have no water. Garbage disposal is very poor. Their personal hygiene is very poor. First of all, they can't afford it. And secondly, amenities are not there. And secondly, they're selling in open places. So it is a main, the main problem with street food is diet. Is the main problem is that dietary, if you look at the dietary constituents, they are perfect. When you look into the environmental supportive agents, they're totally imperfect. Hygiene is poor. Uh, the cooking process is not good because they sell it open, they, they keep it open, they, they have no refrigeration, not possible in an open, you are not allowed to draw electricity. So therefore, another way of, I always say people, that street foods are in a way much safer than five-star food because you don't get stale food. Street food is sold today, finished today. Whatever leftovers, very little leftovers, are usually shared between the vendors. The reason you know why? Because a, a customer who goes to a street food is not a rich customer usually, and he wants his pound of flesh. If I'm buying something with five rupees, I want my five rupees worth of nice fresh food. If you give him stale food, he will not let go of the street food vendor. They'll end up in brawls. They'll say, oh, the why are you not giving me fresh food? Therefore, street food vendors dare not sell stale food. They dare not sell state food because their customers 
are they know their worth of money they know their worth of money they can't like a rich man okay it's not okay it doesn't matter i'll buy from somebody else they can't afford it therefore the street food has to be fresh and that's the reason i was we are doing a recent survey on five star food survey i was asked by fssi to conduct a survey all over india and you find meat in five stars hotel labeled properly meat from australia meat from new zealand they are more than one year old they are frozen kept inside a deep freeze and they are sold they are allowed they seal after that whenever i eat in a five star i i land up with diarrhea i always a mental diarrhea because i have known that the meat is very old know that the fish is very old i psychologically i don't feel well so in a way street food vendors never sell stale food never so when you compare between the uh, the the rackability the then street foods are far better but again i said the main problem is um, is hygiene of the vendor cleanliness of the area disposal of the leftovers and the other garbage that is generated and the water and the ice that they use these are the couple of things which we have found over years is a major problem next one please can i go where am i i'll come to one of the first studies that i did that was calcutta model which was we developed the calcutta model of fao let's just go to the calcutta model one uh, developed the first model of uh, street food calcutta model followed all over the world now uh, uh this actually we started here I, i was with the government of india for 30 years i was the director of the all india institute of hygiene and public health and also director of the chitranjan national cancer hospital so as i was director of both these institutes and long history with the government of india retired and then joined government of west bengal so at that time we did this project and though i was in government of india but we had advisory board with the chief secretary chairing and my co-investigator was the then commissioner of police mr tushar talukdar because i always felt that police is a necessity with the street food vendors you know the reason why because they are illegal they sit on a pavement and the police comes and takes from them tola they take money so already the poor vendors are selling a food at a very low cost and on top of that the police wants to take a part of that money so we wanted to involve police so that they know that this is what is happening so that uh, a, a, a reaction can be done so that some support can be given to the vendors we found can go on please in this model we used about uh, 1 lakh 20 1 lakh 20000 vendors at that time increased a lot we found that each vendor looks at approximately 65 customers a day So what large number of customers that nearly 68 69 lakhs of people eat from street foods this was 1990s now it is nearly double now nearly double and each each kiosk actually employs 2.5 personnel so how helpers boys washing so you can understand how many people are employed huge number of employment huge number of people getting uh, cost uh, low cost food at highly nutritious low cost food and a huge number of families are getting supported that is one of the main things that i'm sorry i'm facing my back to these people so this is something which is we always next next one please next one you can go on you can go on i'll just go on if forget what So the observations was even those days there were about 200 varieties of very popular street foods. We never imagine how many varieties are there. More than 200 varieties, highly nutritious, very cost effective, available very easily and at a very low cost. So you can go on please you can go on of these observations. But what we found I just want to say if you look at what was very poor are all environment linked. If you look at this garbage, food handling, water handling, kiosk placement, technology everything was basically environment linked. so whatever was poor was basically environment like not nutrition next one um and customer awareness was always low and knowledge and regulatory process we have now at that time it was not the next one please we did the next one we'll go into that so analysis of street food we had done a detailed analysis of street foods of and you find nutritionally they nearly do at least one third one fourth of the recommended daily allowance which icmr used to give So with a, such a little money 7 rupees 4 rupees 3 rupees you are getting nearly half of what you need to get nutritionally so you can't imagine that even at home even if you cook at home you can't get we found that you get 200 the previous slide was you can get 200 calories those days in 5 rupees and therefore if you can get that much of calories in just 5 rupees it is impossible to get that at home impossible next one please it's all gives a nutritional analysis next one please what we did was then we wanted to look into the street food safety factor that we found nutritionally they are safe nutritionally adequate then we divided them into three stages one was street foods which are bought at a cottage industry like your puchka what we say golgappas they are made at a slum from where more than 100 vendors take it so it's like a cottage industry there's another group of vendors who buy makes it at home and brings it straight away maybe 40 kilometers by train 
maybe walking five kilometers, it's vendor's home and food. The third variety was where they make it on top, like roll, chow mein and all that. And they make it at the street food, dhalmuri, that we make right at the point of sale. Next one, please. We did the HACCP. You see, HACCP, this first time we did HACCP, which is Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point. Where does the food get dirty? Where does the environmental problem come? Can you go to the third, the next one? third one you find in this case the food they say boil product when you make sandesh is something which is made as a cotton industry so when you make it at, at when they boil the milk curdle the milk get sanitized totally safe but the, you find the microbial content raises from 3 to 16 and then to 17 when they're making that by hand by the first they are screening it by cheesecloth and making them by hand so the cheesecloth through which they strain the chana in which the, the water comes out and the casein remains, that cloth is not washed. So it is that cloth and the hand of the vendor. So both have to be, both are environment linked. So what do you have to tell a chana maker or a maker? Nothing else, that wash your cloth every day. And when you're making the sandesh, please wash your hands with soap and water before doing it. So these two simple advice will make the contamination remain at three, which is the earlier slide. Next one. We did what the vendor does at home, the ghugni, one of the highest contaminated product. Anything with curries, you students must be eating, you children must be eating. So be careful when you have curried products. They are very good agents for microbial growth, excellent agent. So therefore be very careful with curried products. See to it that they are boiled very properly before you eat them. Boil very properly. The chana and all should be very boiled properly. Next one, please. The ones that you get on the street food stall are the safest because they are making it in front of you, hot, they're giving you immediately. So they are basically the safest product that you get. So therefore, when you choose your street foods now, you can possibly go for this. Next one. Uh, we did on the water also. Next one, please. And what we found that the water in source was quite safe in all the corporations that we found, but it got contaminated when it was inside their own jug. So that means they're not cleaning their own equipment. So that is where, again, it's a cleaning problem, environmental problem of cleaning the jug where the individual vendors stored the water. Um, so therefore, next one, please. Next one. So I'm very proud to say we got that Eduardo Soma award from FAO for this next one. Next one. Now I'll come to the recent study that we did, the most recent study to compare how they have changed. To compare, this was a study. What we found that to monitor street food, there was a huge problem because you don't have enough people. For example, the whole of Calcutta city, where you have more than nearly two lakhs of vendors, 500 hotels and small eateries, and other 500 dhabas and others, but this huge number of food eateries, you just have about less than 20 food inspectors food safety officers as we call them. So how will they monitor? Impossible for, they don't even touch street food vendors. They go to big hotels for many reasons. They can get a bribe, they can get whatever. So big hotels are very attractive to them, but not the street food vendors. Therefore, no monitoring. Therefore, we found that a method has to be developed where you can do something where you, these food vendors can be monitored positively, helped helps to improve the food, but not by even simple people can do it. That's why I'm sharing this lecture with you. We've developed an audiovisual aid with the help of World Health Organization, where you don't need to lift samples, don't need to take it to the laboratory. You have an audiovisual scoring method of 42 indicators, score them, and the scoring also tells you where they're going wrong, because there are 10 heads. One is like water, one is like garbage, one is like raw material, one is like personal hygiene. So you find where they're scoring the lowest. Wherever they're scoring the lowest, you give input on that. Like if a vendor is getting good raw food, don't need to tell him about raw food. His water is very poor. Show him, okay, your water is very poor. Sometimes they have the ice. They use the ice for storing the bottles. And the same ice they'll put into the beverage when they're giving you nimbu pani or something. So tell them, though, that, okay, your ice has to be safe and kept separately from giving into the. So this gives you a method of giving a proper scoring. Next one, you can go on. You can go on. I've mentioned most of it. So what happened? Based on this, you can give them a scoring, a grading, and a star record like five star, four star, three star. So they are only those vendors who are getting no star or just one star. You take them for lifting the samples. So the number of vendors, like you start with 100, you boil down to only five who are not that good. So the manpower need, the cost is just a paper and pencil thing. And we actually did the whole survey with the help of students like you from the KPC Medical College. We used their students, their first and second year medical college students, and they did the whole survey. We covered 108 areas of Calcutta, a huge number of areas, and we divided. And even what happens, the area-based problem also comes out. Like that area has no water. 
So they say, okay, Kolutoleria has no water. Problem is water. Vendor said, okay, they say we have no water to wash. They have to go two kilometers to collect water. Then we tell the Calcutta Municipal Corporation, please give them a source of drinking water there. Uh, next one, please. Next one. Ultimately, what we did was, um, um, you can go on, you can go on. You can just go on. I mentioned all that. So we did all these rating systems. And next one, please. Uh, we divided and we found the graded. I told you already we graded and we rated the vulnerable areas was found out. Next one, please. Uh, we, I've already told you the coverage. Okay, what we found that the what are the most popular street foods now? We found the most popular street foods now that you have is those which are sold, uh, they're made at the place of steel. About 74% are where the food is made. That's a very positive thing because those are the food that are least contaminated. So 74% of street foods that you get are sold at the point. Rest only whatever is left over comes either cooked from a cottage industry or from the vendor's home. Next one. And we found among all the food stuff, next one, among all the food stuff, the most common are the snacks. Not the meals, not the other kind of food, not the beverages, but the snacks. I think most of people have a, you know, between two meals or something. Uh, snacks is the meals are mostly by daily commuters who come by train. But most popular is snacks. And I told you earlier, snacks are possibly the least contaminated. Meals like gugni, curries are most contaminated. So snacks are least contaminated. So these positive things we come out. But ultimately, when we did a cross analysis and the star rating of all the grading and scoring, I'm not going to details. Next one, please. When you find into it, say, look at the issues that came out, like what come. 97% vendors had problem with garbage management. So you, we go back to what we found in the 1990s, the same problems that we found there, garbage, garbage management, personal hygiene, water management, cleanliness. Of course, no reuse of disposable evidence has come newly. Oil for cooking reuse has come newly. Safe food storage remained. So if you look into these 30 years of history of street foods, the problems that exist in the 1990s, we have the same problems existing there. Nutritionally perfect, nothing to complain. Cost is very, very uh, impossible. It has increased by about five times. But if you got those day 1,000 calories in, in, in five rupees, you now get them in 25 rupees. That is really nothing. You get a roll out of 15, 20 rupees, which is actually you get more than 500 calories from that. Now we are counting calories on the other way around. But for a poor man, we count how much calories he's getting and how much money. So therefore, if he's able to get, for example, 1,000 calories in 25 rupees, good enough. Good enough. You are nearly covering 50% uh, of your recommended daily allowance. So for the poor man, we are worried when you're taking it. Because I'm not worried. I eat it all the time. But the thing is, they are worried. We need to give them proper nutrition at a very low cost and very balanced.